Good morning guys, uh, bit chilly this morning, Fuji Shooter 67 here with another video, uh, probably going to be my last video from Fundy National Park, didn't really have a particular thing in mind this morning except just to get as many shots as I can before the leaves come off the trees, um, haven't done an awful lot in the way of autumn colours but uh, this morning I decided that's what I was going to do, there's a deer right there. Uh, anyway, came down this morning, uh, was hoping maybe to get a sunrise but it was a few minutes too late but as I came around the corner here just by the golf course in the park, the sun was just hitting these trees here and it's just absolutely fantastic. Um, so I fired off a few shots here with a 55 to 200 and tried to isolate the trees a little bit from the background there and catch that beautiful morning light. There's also another tree just starting to catch the light up there kind of a, looks like a maple that's kind of against some pines so I'm going to try and pick that out again there as well. Uh, I'm going to try and get as many images as I can. Um, like I say, this is probably the last time I'm going to be down here before winter. I'll come back down again when there's some snow on the ground or something. So hello again everyone. The clip you just saw was last week. Um, came down, I said it was going to be my last trip to Fundy National Park. After I shot those few uh, images of that absolutely pure dead brilliant light there in the morning. Um, and the, the deer walking across. I grabbed those couple of shots. Um, I started to feel really sick, so I basically took off and went back home. Uh, I did grab a couple of shots on the way home too. Um, but that really cut short the day, I feel like. So I decided to come back and continue the video from there. Uh, so it's about a week on. The leaves are pretty much all off the trees right now. Uh, there's one or two hanging on and there'll probably be some images to be had. But if you remember, uh, in one of the previous videos uh, from the Copper Mine Trail, um, I passed a waterfall called uh, Hasty Brook, um, and it was really, really nice. But it wasn't flowing very well, and I said it would be nice in the spring. Well, I came back here this morning, and uh, we had a lot of rain last night or, or all day yesterday, I guess. And uh, I came back to Hasty Brook. Um, the shots that I got on the last trip here didn't materialise, they weren't as good as I thought they were going to be. So uh, I came back this morning and there there she is. Um, beautiful waterfall, right? really flowing well. I've been down there already, um, as you can see now the sun's starting to to really uh, hit the water there and it's, it's, given, it's going to blow out the highlights. So I've got my shots, I've done quite a few. I wanted to go a bit further up, um, but the light is just really harsh at the top there, so I um, want to remember again, if, if I'm coming here, early morning light's going to be right on the waterfall, uh, so that's a thing to remember. Um, I'm not going to tell you the exposures I use and everything right now, because to be honest, when I went down in there, it was quite precarious standing on the rock, so I didn't have the chance to to record all the, all the settings. Um, I had the polarizer on obviously, uh, and I tried some wide shots, and I also tried some closing in on, on some of the rocks with the water coming over them. Um, what else did I do? I also uh, tried something I never tried before, is a vertical panorama. I only took one set of images, I think it was three or four going up. So I'm not sure how that's going to work, but uh, hey, if you don't try, right? So. Uh, not sure where else I'm going to go from here. Uh, I'm not going further in this trail, it's too long and I remember it was all uphill. Uh, I'm going to head back to the car and then just see if I can get some some uh, 
some colour and stuff that's still hanging on to the trees. Speaking of images, um, I've heard a lot of photographers um, saying it's not about the image. Uh, these landscape photographers, and, and we're out and we're we're in the woods and mountains and and what have you. Um, and a lot of them are saying it's not about the image; it's about the experience and all the rest of it. Now, to a certain extent, that's that's true. But for me, it's all about the image. The reason I come out is to get the image. Uh, and I can assure you, I'm not going home without an image. Um, will it be portfolio worthy or, you know, prize winner? Probably not, but I ain't going home without an image. I'll take some kind of shot um, and I'll try my best to make it a keeper. Um, the only way I'm not going to go home with an image is if I have a, a malfunction on equipment. Um, so it is about the image. That's the reason that we buy cameras. That's the reason we buy lenses. That's the reason we buy tripods. And that's the reason why we get out to do this kind of stuff. Um, it is about the image. Sure, if, if you're enjoying the environment that you're in, uh, getting up early and, and going for that sunrise or, or chasing a sunset at night or chasing a weather, chasing the light, yes, it's fantastic and uh, the experience is absolutely awesome. But at the end of the day, all that contributes towards the image. So it really is about the image. Um, that's why we do this. That's why I do it. Um, so I'm not saying anything bad about the, the guys that are saying it's not about the image. They enjoy being out in the woodland or the seascapes or in the mountains. And that's absolutely fantastic, and I love it too. But um, the image is why we do this. It's why I do it. Uh, searching for that perfect shot. Well, do we ever get it? Who knows? What is perfect? If you're happy with the shots that you get at the end of the day, then mission accomplished. Um, so, yeah. <laughs> A little bit of a rant there, I guess, but uh, no. So yeah, it's about the image. Um, signing off for now. See you in a bit. Fundy National Park, but I uh, just discovered another beach. A uh, bit of everything today. We were in the woods a minute ago doing waterfalls, and now we're on the beach. Uh, found this lovely piece of driftwood here. Um, tried a few shots from both sides, uh, leading it into the frame, and then I also tried one from the end of the log, straight up the middle. Um, I had the Zomi 10 stop on for those guys. Uh, tried various exposures, but all the way up to probably about a minute and a half was the longest one. Um, the tide was in, but the tide here goes out so fast um, that the last couple of shots probably lost their effect. Um, but yeah, I just thought I'd let you share this with you guys. Um, absolutely beautiful spot. Lots of driftwood around. This one is, is just fantastic. What a, what a beautiful shot. Well, hello again. Uh, just before I head back to the car, um, I thought I'd take a few minutes just to to tell you about how good the Fujifilm 
system is. Um, if you've seen my other videos, you'll know I've been an icon guy for probably 40 years or so. Um, I've had all kinds of icon stuff from film cameras, digital, you name it. Um, but I had always admired Fujifilm. And like I said before, I looked at an XT20, um, but just waited to bide my time and, and waited for the, the XT30 to come out. And uh, some people online on YouTube and stuff have compared it to like an upgrade from a cell phone camera. Um, nothing could be further from the truth. Like it's it's not just an upgrade from a cell phone camera. It's an absolutely amazing little powerhouse. Um, if you're someone who just new to photography and just wants to pick it up, stick it on automatic and, and fire off a bunch of shots, it's going to work great for you. But if you're a serious enthusiast, um, it's got some amazing specifications and it's a, it is really a powerhouse. What do I like most about it? One, the looks. Two, the build quality. And three, the quality of the images that it produces. Um, I'm not going to get into technical stuff about sensors and stuff because that's way above my head. Um, all I'll say is that the images that this camera can produce are, are quite amazing and I've only really started to scratch the surface of the settings and stuff. Um, most of the time I'm shooting on aper aperture priority. Um, I go full manual sometimes but most of the time it's aperture priority. Um, and I, I usually have it set to record JPEGs and RAW. Uh, now the JPEGs, my favourite uh, film simulation is, uh, is the Velvia, which I've said before. Uh, now they're all absolutely fantastic film simulations. It's just, uh, the Fuji system is it's just an amazing little camera for me. Um, if I had a, a few things that I wish could be better uh, about the Fuji, um, First thing is, I wish I had another one so that I could record video on that while I'm shooting and show, talk you through guys through the video. Um, that's probably not going to happen though. Um, that's why you don't always see me talking through my images. Um, the Q button, everybody hates the Q button on the back and I'm sure, uh, I know there's a firmware update that you can disable it. Um, I would do away with it altogether and just have a, a proper thumb grip there. Um, the camera could do with a bigger hand grip, it would be a bit more chunky I guess. Uh, and the little joystick on the back I find very fiddly, could be a little bit bigger. I love how it works, how it operates, um, but it just could be, a, could be a bit more substance to it. Um, what I would really like to see from Fuji um, would be kind of a... a a more enthusiast version of the XT30. So add some weather sealing, take out some of the the presets, we'll call them, but the modes and stuff. Uh, you get landscape mode, fireworks, scene modes, all those different things. I take all them out and focus on the enthusiast features. Give it a slightly bigger hand grip, change the joystick, um, and give it some weather sealing. And it you're going to say I'm describing an XT3. Yeah, probably, but an XT3 costs a lot more money. If, if Fujifilm could come out with a, an XT30S or something like that, um, that was kind of a stripped down, bare bones, um, you know, without all the, the scene modes and stuff, I think they'd be on a winner. Um, I'm absolutely loving it. This is a Fujinon 55-200. to 200. Um, Absolutely amazing lens. Now Fujifilm, I wish, I really wish you'd have a teleconverter for this. Um, that's really <laughs> all I would say about it, to be honest. Uh, there's there's no negatives. The Fuji system, I, I'm new to it. I'm still exploring it. I'm absolutely loving it. Um, and I will be buying more Fuji stuff in the future, for sure. Um, my images are better. Now, whether that's due to me 
taking more time and focusing on what I'm doing or whether it's down to the camera or not. Um, combination of both maybe but the the camera for me is, is just top notch and I absolutely love it. So yeah, those are only the few little things I would change. Um, not that Fuji's going to listen to me. But um, yeah, and like I say, I'd love to have another one just so that I could uh, use it for the vlogging and the video and um, what I'm doing and talk so you guys could see when I'm actually composing an image or whatever and talk you guys through it. But uh, yeah, that's it. Um, loving Fuji. Hello everyone, uh, this video has turned into be quite the project. Started a couple of weeks ago when I headed down to Fundy Park in the morning uh, to try and get some, some autumn shots and nice colour shots and stuff like that. Um, I grabbed a few shots that day, uh, a couple on the golf course like you've seen in the video, um, and then there was a deer that walked across in front of me. Uh, so I grabbed a, a, a quick shot of that before it ran off. It's not the best shot, but I grabbed the shot anyway. Um, but like I said, I started to feel really ill and I took off home. Grabbed a couple of shots on the way home, which uh, one of them I was really happy with actually, to be honest, it was a round tree, uh, which I really, really like. Um, I came back a week later, which was actually last week, uh, last week Thursday, uh, to continue the video. Uh, and I went up to the Coppermine Trail to Hasty Brook, uh, grabbed a couple of shots of the waterfall there, um, grabbed a couple of shots around the park, went to Herring Cove Beach, which I'd never been to before, um, grabbed a couple of long exposures on the beach, which uh, worked quite well there. Um, then I shot a little bit of the video about the Fuji film system. And just to finish off, uh, I headed uh, to the go-to shot at um, Dixon Falls. Uh, we had a lot of rain the day before and uh, I thought Dixon Falls would be a nice way to round off the, the day. Um, unfortunately, <laughs> uh, I did get I actually did get a few shots at, uh, there at Dixon Falls which are, are pretty good. But unfortunately, um, I screwed up the end of the video. Uh, totally my fault. I didn't realise um, I had used up all the memory on the card when I when I hit the video. Um, I was kind of in a rush. There was a big football match in Glasgow that night, and I was wanting to see it on TV. So I, um, in, a, in a rush, I just kind of hit record and took off uh, back back home and uh, screwed up the end of the video. So. Finally, it's complete. Uh, you'll have seen some images through the through the video there. Uh, I'm going to leave a few at the end here, which I hope you like. Sorry for the the, the stop and start in the video. It, it took so long to accomplish, but um, I guess on a, on a good note, is there's a lot more images in there than probably what would have been to start with. Um, so yeah, uh, guys. Really appreciate you uh, watching the video, um, so I'd like to thank you for watching. Uh, please like, share and subscribe if you can. And, uh